I want to deconstruct just some of the basics of, of strumming. First of all, of course, strumming, we play the chords, right? The other thing we do is we play the time. Uh, what else do we do with strumming? What are, the, what are some of the other things we establish with strumming? Is rhythm. rhythm. Is that time? The feel. Okay. <coughs> the feel. The groove. Right? Dynamics, right or soft. Dynamics. Okay. <coughs> Those are the four basic things. Okay. Chords, time, dynamics, and feel. How often do you hear people playing where they forget the last two? <laughs> <laughs> okay. At jam sessions. And, and <laughs> off, often at jam sessions. Now, um, something else which goes down to the next level. When you're playing time with someone, there are so many ways to play in time, but, um, but, but not really be contributing to time. I can tell when someone is kind of following me playing in time as opposed to whether they are part of the engine driving the groove. There is a huge difference in this, okay? So what I want to do, just really quick, is everybody just play an F chord. Okay. I'm going to set a tempo, and I want you all to strum with me, okay? of course, but it is a generalization that I have found to be true, is that the men will be over-aggressive in how they strum, a gross over-generalization, yes, and the women will, will um, be too timid and will tend to be followers instead of pushing the time and being assertive and owning, it's like owning your power, you know, <laughs> and it's the same thing when you strum. These, there, there are subtle, I mean, these things about who we are actually come out in how we play. That's why music is personal expression, right? You know? So the way you strum and the way you set a groove says a lot about the kind of control and ease and confidence and power that you take <coughs> when you play. Some people, when they're not sure, ugh, go for broke because that makes them feel 
more comfortable just to make a lot of sound and to be strong and take a stand and it almost hides the other and then the other side of the coin is kind of, uh, you know, I'm not so sure of it yet so, so I'm afraid. Of course there's a middle ground where it's all controlled and, and it's, you know, there's, there, there's, a, there's a nice groove. Um, so what I want to do is just very quickly just go through and strum uh, let's just do one measure of F, one measure of C7, back and forth. Uh, but I want to do each one of you individually. I want you to listen very, very closely. It's an, it's, we're talking about something that's nuanced here, okay? It's not an obvious thing, and all of you, depending on your playing level, will be in different places about it. And this is a very big part of where the art of playing jazz comes from. It's, a, it's the heart of it, you know, and it's subtle stuff. And it's very hard, if you only play in large bands or groups, it's hard to have a chance to hear this because um, there's, it's too loose. There's too much going on and you can't really hone in and, and develop it. So it's just, you know, it, it depends on your playing circumstances. I'll, I'll just start, start this way. So um, just one measure of F, one measure of C, okay? One, two, three, go. Identify it for, for when it happens. 
I don't know if I can do this. Well, that's okay. Let's, you want to try just one chord? Too steady, you know. Yeah, I like to do back and forth and up and down. Well, that's... I'll try. What, um... Okay, let, yeah. let, 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 let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. So, one, two, ready, go. I get messed up. Or it's 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 yeah. hard. Uh, yeah. uh, there's there's no question about it. Yeah. It depends who you're who, yeah, who, exactly. who you're who you're playing with. And the yeah. thing, the only thing you can do with something like that, you're welcome to take a seat if you like. Uh, I like that. You can't stay real long. Okay, that's no no problem. <laughs> um, the, it, uh, when when you're with other people, there there's a thing where where you know if everything's kind of all over the place. It's not about playing loud and keeping everybody. It's about getting really short and intense, and it sort of puts everybody like into it, like like a groove in the road, so that they stop wobbling all over the place. It helps. Mm -hmm. It helps get everybody centered. Let's try it. A one, two, red, go. Okay, so now you're choking every time. Okay. Um, nothing yes, wrong with choking. It's a choice. Okay. What's that? As in damping choking. As in yeah. yes, that's yeah. called that's called choking when you lift up your fingers a little bit. And depends on what instrument you play. If you play guitar, if you play uke, if you know, there, there's like different approaches for different you know instruments which are appropriate for the instrument. Um, I personally believe for a banjo. Um, the kind of white canvas, the default is letting it ring right. and having it kind of, you know, having to control it with that ring, okay? Mm -hmm. One, two, ready, go. Sorry, it's a deep high, it's very hard to change yeah. when you start choking. One, no, 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 no. Stay, stay there and, and make yourself have to do it, okay? Just don't worry about it. I mean, we're not going to get hung up for it. One, two, ready, go. You want to have a groove and you want to have intensity, but you don't want to be like anal or stiff about it. You know, there's like a whole, there's like a, a place in the in the curve, right? Okay, one, two, ready, go. She's got a, she's maintaining a guitar mentality 
on the banjo. So that's a different kind of attack involved for the, just the same thing with the uke. So I'm gonna have the same problem you have because I'm so used to. And it really depends on who taught you. Let's give it a try. <laughs> One, two, ready, go. Okay, so right off the bat, a little louder. A little you're a little dainty quiet. player. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hear that all the time. Go ahead. Okay, one, two, three, go. <laughs> So used to as you're doing, yeah. yeah. And and I used to play guitar a thousand years ago, and so I was used to the up and down stroke. So I I, I do, I never do I straight forwards. And if I was doing it, I'd be putting that and, into what, and what do you usually do when you're? Well, it depends on the song, and, and you know we've been doing a lot of fifties and sixties. Yeah, yeah. And So what happens is you know. So what was what we'll do like um, things you do? If we, if I was doing like Wake Up Little Susie, we stop. So there's an upstroke. Okay. Of this is to is I'm trying to, it's like a feel connection and then from there you build and alter your feel depending on the circumstances. So, so all that sounds are crazy. those straight fours, which to me used to sound so boring. They're actually you're not. I mean, it's you're putting not in all those others. All boring. Okay. That's the thing. You can make it sound boring. Have you ever heard someone just go? That's just like heavy. Yes. dragging, I'm not playing any wrong chords, I'm playing in time, it's like, uh, 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 uh. It's like, so, so again, you know, this is a, a nuanced kind of thing. You can drive a band and make it swing and make it sound fabulous by playing just simple time that really has a good push, it's not loud, it's nothing fancy, no special strums, no nothing, and you can be you can be the center of what makes the whole band swing. And what happens is when everybody connects to that, when you connect to that, it's just like I said, it's a high, it's a really fun kind of feeling. So I just wanted to kind of hone you in to um, uh, to but this. Can you uh, get people to that point? Because that happens with some. Uh, I mean, I've played a lot of these places, but when you're doing like that banjo band, and you've got some of those play, and that's, that's all I usually am hearing, is that that you can, as you're doing here, getting all of us to sort of get into that groove, can you get that well, kind of people into that, that groove? Yes, that leads me to my next topic, where the, where the focus is, okay? And it's all part of the same thing, and this doesn't matter, again, what your level is, nothing to do with it. Um, when, well, I shouldn't say it has nothing to do with it, because when you're first learning, you're, you're very busy thinking about how to play your chords and what chord comes next. And if you have chords in front of you, you know, you're reading, you're checking, you, you're, you're trying to coordinate a lot of different information that goes on. And if you try to separate all of that out, it's, it's really complicated what you're doing. You're taking in information, your hands are trying to remember something, your brain's trying to control your hands, you're trying not to get lost in the song. Maybe you try to listen at the same time. It's a lot to coordinate. Uh, are most of you comfortable reading? Do you find it hard to go back and forth with all right, this I stuff? The way you're not. We play from lead sheets, so. Okay, but is it feet comfortable feet. for you, or is it kind of back and forth? Uh, back and forth. What do you mean? You know, in terms you, of getting lost and hearing and and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Not so much anymore. I mean, it was. But it I, was I, I okay. Played, played because it, it's yeah. it's a digestive process that that happens. Now, what I want you to do is um, we're going to talk about focus, and focus is the other. This is another thing which is overlooked a lot, and it was so interesting this weekend. I, I went around jamming with all these different people, and it was so much fun. I mean, I mean, uh, there were great banjo players here, many different styles, and all this kind of stuff. I could learn about the personality of who I'm playing with. And what they're, uh, well, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't make assumptions that it's their personality. It might be their personality, or it might just be 
what they're after for this event, where their focus is as they're playing. And I'm talking about advanced players, I'm talking about professional players, okay? People who play, get paid to play gigs. I can hear what they're after depending on how they accompany people and what they're doing, you know, and, 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 like, and where their focus is. So um, I want all of us to play two measures of F and two measures of C7. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to set a tempo, we're all going to do it together, and then I'm going to start talking to you. And I want you to listen to me while you're playing, okay? Okay, ready? <laughs> a one, two, a one, two, three, and... to listen 
out here to the group and to take themselves away. It's a self, it's an absorption. Now, if you don't feel confident about playing your chords, if you don't feel confident about reading or getting lost, this is a very um, uh, risky feeling thing to do, to listen out here. But the funny thing is, is that it actually makes you a stronger player. And if you do listen out here, there, there's like a way to coordinate it. You guys are all more advanced, so you don't need to know this, but, but um, just for other people who are not advanced that you might end up having to play with, you know, there, there's a way to, um, to like check in. And people don't have it separated, you know, we, we haven't divided all these things that are going on. You don't really think, all you know is, ah, chords, music, ah, you know, like you're just kind of in a muddle. But actually, you want to think, let your hands, your hands have muscle memory, don't be over controlling, like don't over control your kids, don't over control your hands, you know. So you let your hands do their thing, you guide them, but you do not interfere. You, you, let your, you try to look at the music and only glance at the hands if you have music. If you don't have music, that gives you more freedom. You're looking at the music, only look at your hands when you need to, and keep your ear open so that you're leading with your ears. And that's going to be a recurrent theme. And so somebody who is less confident of their strumming or less confident of the chords, try to get them to Follow the music more, watch their hands less, and listen to the group. Just listen to the group, listen to the group. And even that one thing alone will, will make a huge difference. You're not going to get everybody, because some people go okay, and they'll just keep doing what they do, right? You know? but, but it will make, it, it happens automatically, and it's magical. And when it happens, it's, it's, it's incredible. So did you feel that connect, the deep connect? as opposed to just playing along that you guys have? After, after you play, like, it, I mean, you can sort of hear every individual instrument as they're playing as opposed to it's just It's not yourself. just like this, yeah. You can hear, you can hear as a whole, you feel comfortable with yourself. It's not like I can't hear myself. There's a lot of people playing, but somehow there's no competition. There's no one overriding. It's just, it's just easy. It's just kind of there, and you just kind of flow right in. So, so anyway, so that's that's uh, some of. What that's I a really good point, though, right? Because in our band, we play. We have um, five banjos, and then we have a couple of horns and piano. Mm -hmm. And at rehearsal, we'll 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 say, okay, we're going to play, you know, ensemble, piano, da 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 da. And at the end, somebody will say, what happened to the piano solo? Like, Where were you? <laughs> there because uh -huh. yeah. they're so focused on themselves yeah. they're not listening to what's happening there. no and and i tell you it's natural too i mean i remember when i was first starting to play and i i tell this story you know always because you know everybody has this experience i had my first job you know i i, I got the last like year of your father's mustache in the british village before it closed you know that was like my first job and i had my little fringe dress and i was a teenager you know and i'm sitting there going oh my god you know i hope i can play and i'm the second banjo player there's like a lead banjo player i'm the second and so the guy not too happy about um having another banjo player there the guy who's a leader and he's sitting there doing all this stuff Finally, we reach this point where he gives me a solo, and I'm like, ah, you know? So whatever I did, ain't she sweet, you know, whatever it was, I'm playing with all my heart. I am playing and playing. And then I finish my solo, and I get up, and they're on some other song already. <laughs> <laughs> And so it's a skill that you develop, and it has everything to do with relaxing and staying open. There's a certain thing where anxiety will hyper-focus you. You have to, it's very important, you know, I, I sound a little kind of mind-body zen or whatever. I actually, it, it actually is very, very important when you're playing music. There's a relaxation and an openness. The more anxious you are, the more whatever. The more you close and the more you don't hear what's going on and the less you're able to sort of go on, go for the ride. You know, there's a ride that you're going on. A joy ride. A joy ride, yes. <laughs> a joy ride. And that is the point of that because that's what I wanted to try to express, you know. So it's, it really feels great. So, so strumming, it's deep. So... Um,
And uh, we, I don't want to get into a whole thing of, of feel because I'm, I'm conscious of you having having to leave early. I don't worry about that. This is, this is a, a bonus for me to be here. Okay. Well, don't worry about it. <laughs> well, um, feel. Different instruments, different songs, different styles that we want to do uh, just to articulate some of the things that you can do to alter your feel. Um, dynamics, right? Aggressive, you can still swing and still be open and driving. And, and when you play a loud with aggression, you're not going, uh, you're not banging. It's, it's a, not this way, it's this way. Okay? And even though all of this sounds just like words, if you think this way, it happens. It's a point of view that you will communicate to your fingers. Like it works, you know, if you just sort of, you know, the imagery works, you know. So, um, dynamics, obviously, are feel change. Uh, how you strum, choking, not choking, choking every other one, um, upstrokes, you know. <laughs> change feels, the slightest feel changes the whole stage that you're playing on. Now when you're in a band situation with a lot of other banjo players, a lot of times people don't pay any attention to, you know, they want everyone to play the right chords, they want everybody to be in time, maybe louder or softer, but there's a whole other level that you can do with your groups that, that people forget about. Have everybody play ringing downstrokes. And when we come to the bridge, everybody choke. It's a very simple change that's sort of like an arrangement, but it's not an arrangement. It shifts the whole feel of the song and makes it so much more interesting, right? And it's a simple thing to do. Sort of simple, you have to be able to control your, your, your feel. So, so what are some of the different things? You, I have a whole list of things you know, that can affect feel. I just demonstrated choking is one, dynamics is one. What are some other things that affect the mood? The, the mood you're in. Okay. Maybe. What What is the physical thing? How would you How would you um, uh, uh, how, Like how would that be articulated uh, on your banjo? Like what are some of the ways that you can Like say you're angry. What are some of the things you might do on your banjo? Well, you might play more aggressively. Okay. Yeah, you might. You may not. If it's okay, well, so another thing that affects feel is attack. Okay? Say you're playing something that's a gentle ballad, you're going to attack it differently than you're playing some low-down blues, maybe. Right? It's an attack. These are wonderful, subtle, yet huge variations to make music come alive. Because how many times have you heard people play and they, they might play very nice. They play one song, wow, they're really nice. They play another song, it's faster, yeah, they play faster. Play another song, yeah, it's slower. They play another song, okay. You know, it's like all the same, it's just faster or slower or whatever, but they do the same thing all the time. You know, whether it's fancy all the time or simple all the time, there are simple things you can do. In fact, some of the most important and musical and artful things you can do are simple things, you know. And simple things like in a group, you know, I get asked all the time, well, gee, you know, this is all well and good, but I'm playing with 20 other banjo players, so how can we do something? Have everybody choke every other beat just on the bridge. Have everybody let it ring for the rest of the chorus. Very simple. It's not a matter of being fancy or, or whatever. All of a sudden, your tune has a whole different thing going on, right? And it's a really nice thing to do. And by the way, that also encourages you when everybody starts doing it and all of a sudden there's a shift, everybody goes, oh, that sounds cool. And everybody wants to listen as a group, too. It encourages your, your group connection, your ear connection to your group, too. And so, that's if you're with other fretted instruments, but, but it affects any instrument. If you're saying you're the only uh, uh, four-string instrument or whatever, <laughs> number of string instrument, 
you know, in a musical situation, say you just have a string bass and a, a horn or a fiddle or, or whatever it is you're playing with, it doesn't matter, um, and you've got all this airspace to yourself, wow, you've got a lot of power. You've got a lot of power. You're sitting there laying down a nice thing, and then maybe the second, the second uh, chorus, you're going to shift something a little bit. It's very inspiring, and it alters and lifts the song and makes it more, more deep, more interesting to the listener. It's also much more fun to play because you're playing in an interactive way. And that's the next thing I want to say, is the way that you make the choices of what you want to do, maybe other people respond to how you change, maybe you'll respond to what they're doing. Maybe you're sitting there strumming along and all of a sudden there's some trumpet players taking this long, hot chorus. Well, maybe that will inspire you Instead of going like this to go, you know, you dig in, maybe all of a sudden it's the ukulele solo. And so we want to have a nice light little thing and let the ukulele shine in front of it. Or get away from it. And I'm actually giving away one of the other things. What's another? Silence. Space. Mm -hmm. Space. Yeah. Well, I, I'm... All of those are all of those are part of it, and, and we'll, we will articulate high or low is one of the variations you can do. A gross generalization: stay low when you're accompanying, right? You want to have as much bottom and support. Accompaniment is about support. Support comes from the bottom, so mostly you stay low. Okay, not not entirely. You may decide for one chorus specifically not to because that somehow fits what's going on. Maybe the clarinet is doing the low thing, so you decide it'll sound kind of cool to go high just for that chorus, and then you go back low, okay? So high and low, some other variations are silence, very important. Maybe uh, you want to do a break, not play anything, and let somebody give someone a little space and let them do their thing, right? Now that's a nice thing during, during a band chorus. Everybody's playing, uh, you got someone singing, you got a big banjo band of 20 people, you know, and everybody's playing away, everybody's doing Ain't She Sweet, someone decides to take the lead, everybody drops out for half of it. That's cool. Cool. What's going on? That's interesting. Brings it to life, right? It doesn't have to be fancy, you know? Also, the uh, articulation in your strum, uh, uh, like the amount of arpeggiation you give your strum, how tight and how loose your strum is. Yes, absolutely. Those are all, that, that is, that, that, that's, a, that's a feel. Uh, choking, we already said. Accents, we sort of said. You know, how about this? You know. Okay, so not only choking, I'm adding accents. Okay, again, simple things. And boy, does that change the chorus. Just the off beat, maybe? Those are rhythmic patterns, oh. yes, and that's correct. Another thing is rhythmic pattern, and that's something else that you can do. You can, uh, 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 you know, and that I'm sure you know. You hear, you know, maybe someone will go, "Oh, let's do one, two, three. What does one, two, three mean? Do you know what that means when someone yells one, two, three? It means that it means that you no. Know, when, when when you're in the process of playing songs, hey, everybody's playing H E sweet. Uh, Someone might yell Charleston. Yeah. So you're playing. really fun 
you know, because it's a kind of communication and it spits everything up and you don't know what's happening next. Now normally, it can get very confusing if you have a group and someone's yelling, Charleston, and someone else is going, one, two, three, and yeah. stuff like that. You gotta really have, uh, you know, someone who is the designated leader or um, it gets a little loose after a while. We're gonna go down to another level with that. Sometimes even in a, in a democratic thing like, like where you have, a, say you have a lot of guest players all playing together, like everyone's been put together to form the, the, the all-star band or something like that. There's no real leader. Everybody's the all-star. So, so who, who, who runs it? Who calls things? What do you do? Well, there's, there's manners that go along with this. And then in general, someone will tend to say what they want for their solo. And then they'll, they'll go, oh, give me breaks. You know, give me stops. Give me one, two, three. Give me off beats, you know, or something like that. It's all off beats. Sometimes someone's playing a solo and someone else just says, let's give them breaks. You know, so it's, you know, but you're all communicating with each other and watching. So, um, and you keep it interesting and fun, and there's this whole thing going on all the time. What do you want to do now? Yeah, you know, they're all playing. Oh, oh, that's a good groove. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, Charleston, okay, bum, bum. You know, and it's, there's always something going on. You're not just sitting there playing through the song until the song's over and then playing the next song. There's like a whole world going on in the meantime. And if you look very carefully, at, at groups who are accustomed to doing this, at musicians who are accustomed to doing this, you will see they are always following each other. And if they're not following each other, they're less of a good musician. You know, that's, that's all there is to it. And it has nothing to do, they might be the fanciest musician on the planet, they may have chops up the wazoo, they may know how to do tricks and cartwheels and who knows what, but I'm talking about musicianship. I'm talking about artistry, it's something different you know, than being a great player. You can be a great player. There are many people who are great players who don't necessarily know how to be in a good ensemble situation. It's a different kind of training. It doesn't make them a bad person, of course. It doesn't mind me that's not their experience. Some soloists also train as soloists. So they don't really get used to, they don't have the experience of an ensemble mentality. Our instruments are part of a rhythm section. So we are, by nature of what we do, we're playing rhythm, we're playing time, we're playing accompaniment, we're playing chords, and this is part of our job. Unless you've been bequeathed the soloist and it's everyone else's job just to follow you, you don't have to worry about that maybe, you know. But I find with my training as, and I mean training, I didn't go to music school, I did the old fashioned apprenticeship kind of training. I'm, I, well, I always feel I'm in the rhythm section and one of my challenges when I do shows and flashy things or whatever, I'm supposed to be this entertainer, it's hard for me to let go of being in that rhythm section. If someone screws up, I'm there with them and I'm supposed to be up here. <laughs> I have to learn to let it go. So yeah. it's a whole different kind of thing. Primarily, you're with the band. There's this connection going on and that's, that's your primary job. Whether you're playing with 20 banjos or whether you're just you and a tuba player, you know, or whatever, you know, all of these things are what make your music come to life and make it exciting and really fun. So, um, and that is a whole different way of thinking. And it's been newer for me because of now performing with Randy. Uh, hmm. You know, because I, I think you're always, ah, you're listening because you're so paranoid about what you're doing. And now to be listening to what he's doing. Yes. And then we just added a drummer. And so for me, it's been an incredible listening experience yeah. to learn to listen because you were, you're so focused on usually what you're doing at first. And, and you're right, when you suddenly realize that you're, you're all together and you're, you're in that same exact spot you're playing, it's kind of a cool feeling. It's a great yeah. feeling. And, and you, you can always feel it when it sort of dawns on you what you're doing and you suddenly have clicked with everybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, wow, we're all... That's fun. And the first time it ended, I said, oh my God, we actually sounded like a band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, but it, it is a, it's a totally different thing than just sitting and playing your banjo. Absolutely. And we're even sitting in a jam session because you're all usually just playing the same thing. And you would, because I would watch videos of all these musicians, like what you do, and I used to think, what are you doing? Because you're calling out things and you're saying stuff and you're all, even though you're, you know, you're the solo performer there, but you're a team all yeah. playing. Yeah. And I was always impressed by that, that it was, you know, even though Cynthia is the, 
you know, she's the solo, she's a star, it's Cynthia's day. But you, you're all, it's all this, you're all together. Yeah. And, and, and you know, there's so many times you can watch all of these other groups that are playing that aren't like that. Yeah. And that's what always used to stand out for me, that everybody was, you know, you, and you would stop somebody else to take a break. Like, it wasn't always, I'm this person that's out front and doing all this stuff, but everybody was in the same group, you're just saying. Yeah, you know, you get to that <laughs> point, right. and because it sounds so different when it's it all together and working together. It does sound different, and also sometimes you're sitting there and you've got your little group and you're playing, and say someone in your little group is having problems or getting lost or you know something screwed up. They're not paying attention. They forgot how to play a chord. You know, whatever, whatever the reason is or whatever. You know, what happens is is one of the best things you can ever do if you're not sure and something gets screwed up is you've got to stop. Just sort of fade out, stop, wait till you hear where you belong and then come in like you're just supposed to stop and you're just supposed to come in right at that spot. It's the worst thing you can do to keep going and people will often keep going in a panic or sometimes they don't realize that they're off and someone's playing and they're off and you kind of realize, okay, we've got a one song going, and we've got chords from two different places going on, what do we do? It's pretty easy to figure out, if someone thinks they've got it right, and you can figure out that they're all, they're all here, they're not paying any attention, the only thing you can do is figure out where they are, and then go with them, and that will correct it. It happens with, we, we would, you know, put this on the video, but Woody Allen every now and then would, would drop a beat or add a beat, you know, we just adjust. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. You know, what are you going to do? Hey, stop! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, people make mistakes, you know. I, I'll sometimes, uh, in fact, my, my, um, my show here, my little 15 mm -hmm. minutes, I screwed up one of the songs. I left out eight bars. Oh. I was distracted because of something else going on musically. I was distracted, and I skipped eight bars. Well, uh, John just skipped with me. You heard, oh, she's on the bridge now. Okay, well, I don't know why, but okay. <laughs> and he went to the bridge. She's leading, we follow. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay. You know, you probably wondered if he skipped it or not, or if it was me or him. He probably was like, oh, who skipped it? What happened? You know, but it doesn't matter as long as you all end up in the, in the same spot, right? <laughs> You so, get to learn not to smile because that's the giveaway that it was you that did the screw went up. <laughs> oh, you looked at the person next to you. Like, what did yeah, you right. <laughs> Well, that's actually a joke. You know, people go, if you make a mistake, turn around and go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to the guy next to you. But it's still a point to him. Oh, I, love, I love Dizzy Gillespie. I, I, I play with a school of Dizzy Gillespie, which is when you make a mistake, next solo, make it again so that they can <laughs> yeah. Yes. But actually, that is something that's very serious. People make a joke about that a lot in jazz, but to a large degree, that's actually true. Mm. You know, and that gets into something else that I want to talk about with improvisation. So we're going to okay. hold about hold that thought okay. because that that actually is not not so off off the beaten track. Mm. I just want to. But I just want to say one one thing yeah. quick. What Donna, what Donna says right, is when you're playing in a group and you have a drummer versus don't have a drummer. Yeah. It really changes. What you can do. A good drummer or a bad drummer. <laughs> yeah. Well, that too. That too. But yeah. it ch but you know it changes what you have the flexibility of doing, as opposed to your job is to keep the rhythm. Yes. Well, Whereas if you have the drummer who sort of keeps the rhythm, then you can. Well, I yeah. actually feel that way equally about the bass player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. and you know one of the differences between uh, a bass player. Who, who is at a more professional level or more of a hobbyist level, is that a bass player at a professional level will also provide that rhythm, that chord, and that drive, so you can relax. But a bass player who's a hobby player will tend to play along with the chords, and they won't lay something down, you know? And that's okay, too, you know, I mean, whatever. It's great to have the bottom. But, but here again, this is another level. This is a nuance. You know, I have certain taste of what I like in a bass player because there's certain jobs that I want them to do. Uh, there are different styles of bass players. You know, just not this is not a getting off on a tangent because it affects our job as rhythm section players, as as rhythm players. But um, I prefer a bass player who digs in and a, and a very acoustic pulls the strings. There are other styles of bass players who are very full of chops and play light and plug in. 
you know, that's good too, but not for the kind of music and the kind of feel that I prefer. So um, then when they do that, I got to make sure I'm always being propelled. I want to share the job. I want some airspace. I want them to take some of that. I want to be able to lighten up and not have to do that all the time, you know. And the same thing with a drummer. Drummers, because of the nature of the instrument, you know, we all people make jokes about banjo players. Well, musicians, you know, of course, make jokes about drummers too because they, that instrument has a lot of power. And just like a banjo, if you misuse it, it's deadly. You know, a good drummer supports and drives and opens you up so that you don't have to do so. You know, you can. There's so much lighter things you can do. A drummer can bury you. It can bulldoze you. It can push you around and bully you. A bad drummer. And it can just, you know, I mean, and those are the things, you know, that you have to negotiate about the kind of style that you want. Um, I recently had a rehearsal at my uh, house. I'm, I'm starting to work on a new project with this guy who's like the best big band drummer I ever heard. He's like fabulous. He's a very well known drummer. And I had all these top well known musicians there, and we're all sitting there playing, and, and I'm trying out a chart because I'm trying to decide about this project. And the drummer was like too loud. And it was very interesting because he said, he said, you know, he said um, to, to the bass player, don't you think you should play a little louder? You know, don't, you know, because I can't really hear the bass. And Cynthia, I'm not sure if your banjo is really cover, you know, getting out there. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Because I, you know, I mean, I, you know, you have this professional respect. I'm like, well, duh, play softer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And it's like, you know, but the guy is a big band drummer, and he has, it's his job to be full and driving, and that's his professional job. And he didn't have the experience of this different relationship in a small ensemble where we all want airspace, you know. So again, this is getting into a different level. And I'm telling you, this guy's like, he's primo. He, he works with all kinds of star players. He's a great drummer, and I was honored that he wanted to be in my project. And I didn't know how to say, well, can you play softer? <laughs> so next time I will, if we go in the recording studio, if my project happens, I will, of course I will say that, you know, that I wouldn't, I didn't want to say it at that time, but, but it was very interesting. It told me something, you know, it, it doesn't make him good or bad. All it does is say, oh, this guy is really a big band drummer. He doesn't do that much small ensemble stuff. That's all it told me. It just told me the relationship focus that he has with music. So I can hear, and just like you can, where people are coming from. I heard this weekend some people who I think are great banjo players completely self-absorbed in a jam situation. They, couldn't, they weren't listening to the group. In fact, I would say maybe two-thirds of the time, most people weren't listening to the group. Now, some of that, there's a reason for that in these, in these weekends. Some people are there and they just want to go to have their fun and play. They're not trying to create a band. They're not trying to do this. But the sad part is, is they're going to miss the high that they can find if they went to that level. So, um, and they don't know about it, so they don't go for it. You know, so that, that, that's all. But they're, they're not in, you know, whatever. There were some people that I was surprised. They were playing that much too loud. You know, when other people were taking solos. So what does that tell me about them? It tells me that they want to feel they're in charge of the session, maybe? Okay, you know, it makes me, you know, feel, okay, well, you know, who elected you president? It's a jam session, you know? Um, or, or maybe it's, um, or maybe they just like what they're doing around, you know, what other people are doing. I consider that not good manners. It's not good manners, not on a higher musical level. But depending on the circumstances, it doesn't matter. We're all here for fun, that's okay. You want to reach something else and really get a high from it, then, then there's something else that needs to take over or, or it can't happen. So, um, so anyway, um, that's that topic. Um, I want to go on to, to um, improvising. And uh, do you want to take like, five minutes or something with that, or you?